Mic off. Mic on. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to FGM Ecast here for the ANSCAR Cup Series here racing at the Darlington uh, racetrack tonight. Uh, we are waiting for Stuart, who's just got a little bit of an issue with his uh, with his microphone. Hopefully, we'll be back soon. Still there. Okay, let's just run through the championship standing. Sorry about the little bit of technical issue there. Um, so up front, we still have Stephen Williams up in first place with 224 points. Lutra Hair just be. Uh, where am I? Yes. Uh, Lutra Hair behind him, making a huge leap, seven places. Uh, 74 points behind Stephen Williams, but he's only competed in five races so far this season. Christopher Finley in third with 75 points behind in 702. Riley Curtis in joint fourth with Matthew Raymond, both with... Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing for uh, points there. Sorry, my brain switched off. 140, uh, 144 points. Um, then we have Dwayne Priest in sixth with 140. Kay Donnelly, 138. Hamish Gallagher with 137. Chris Parnell, 135. And Ruben Phelps with 134 points. Uh, so it is getting pretty tight up there in the championship. But Stephen Williams, you've got to say, has got a great lead. Absolutely, he does. And I fixed my mic issues. Carl, thanks for taking that over there. Just uh, a carryover from a prior stream. But we've got it corrected tonight. Good evening, everyone here at Darlington. As you say, uh, it's uh, getting quite tight at the top. And uh, we're just going to be looking to see who can make or potentially make a break for it tonight. I, I don't know whether or not we'll get anyone breaking away, but uh, certainly Steve Williams, Luke Traher here in the heat of competition as uh, we've got uh, just under four minutes to go in official practice before we get into qualifying. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one tonight. We've got a couple of, uh, well, a slight returning face, but a new face for the truck series this year. Uh, the champion of the Cup Series, Edward Foster, in the Natari Autosport car uh, along with his teammate Josh Carroll in that Atari car as well with the uh, Bumblebee livery on the front of it, the FGM e-car sponsored cars there. Uh, I'm sure you're quite happy to see them on stream, Stuart. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, to be brutally honest, didn't even know they were running. So uh, I said to you, just as we jumped into the broadcast, oh, it's running tonight and so is JCW. So good to see them there in the, uh, not uh, probably not in that particular one, but good to see them there in the Bumblebee livery uh, that uh, they put together for those two cars. They look fantastic. Steve Williams looking very quick tonight, currently uh, second fastest in practice. Yeah, look, Stephen Williams, it's his championship to lose at the moment. You've got to say um, that race start advantage that he has at the moment is really helping him out at 224 points at the first place a 74 point lead over luke Traher. that is a huge amount of points at this stage of the season yeah absolutely and uh, luke will be working hard here he is actually our only first multiple race winner in the truck series this season so just shows you the consistency of performance of stephen williams to still be up on top of the points uh, at this stage of the season, what are we tonight? Round eight um, tonight. So he uh, has done a, a really good job at just making sure that he finishes races uh, strongly. And um, again, we speak about it every week, about the importance of keeping a clean truck and uh, and managing your race for sort of that last, potentially after the last caution period, but certainly into that last sort of 25 laps or so. Yeah, it's all about keeping that car clean and keeping it running, of course, uh, as is often the case in motorsport. Uh, the better you can keep the car towards the end of the race, the better it's going to be. Uh, of course, the big thing here at Darlington, is, again, as we often say on these oval races, uh, tyre manage things like that is very important here. Um, the drivers will be struggling a bit with the right side here. They do tend to run a very high line as well, so you'll see them running up against the wall to get nice and fast, which can make it a little bit tricky for passing sometimes. 
Yeah, well, we're going to have to uh, keep an eye out for that one tonight as well. Uh, of course, the uh, the track here, quite narrow at one end, um, quite a tight uh, bend at one end of the track um, with your more typical uh, open circuit. No, Not not quite high banking here either uh, in comparison to some of the other trucks that we visit. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's slightly uh, less angle on the banking really does sort of hurt the tyres a little bit more. The more banking you've got, the less strain you put on your tyres, basically. That's why those super speedways have such high banking to them, of course. Um, you did say that slightly less typical layout here at Darlington. Uh, a little bit wider. I hope it's turn one and two and then gets tighter on three and four. So you have to be careful to lift off through three and four there because it's very easy to, uh, to get problems as you go across those corners because it does get a little bit tighter so you just got to ease off a little bit more than you would expect and sometimes you'll see drivers just tapping the wall a little bit especially on the exit of turn number four and then having a big spin across the start finish line which isn't that wide because of those concrete barriers it can be easy to have a big wreck here so probably expecting uh, a few cautions here tonight um probably not as many though as we saw uh, the other night when we did head to bristol with the cup series uh, bristol dirt so uh Albeit that uh, ended up being probably less than we expected as well. So standard driving this year in uh, Anne's car across the truck and the Cup Series has been extraordinarily high. So uh, we'll see what tonight brings. Yeah, that's it. It's been very good series-wise. Even the Uncovered Series and the Arca Series for Anne's car, the developmental series. Very few cautions in that uh, series for the drivers. We saw 10 cautions at Bristol in the dirt race, which is incredible, really, when you think about it. Uh, it was a very hard race, very tricky one to get right, but a uh, very rewarding one as well for many of those drivers. Very different. Hopefully, we'll actually see the race itself uh, come tomorrow, as long as the rain stays off. So we'll cover uh, his first lap as he gets underway here in uh, the uh, Symboys number 23, Troy Davison. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on this lap. And as you can see, just coming onto the back straight here, we're going to come into that slightly tighter section now. Lifts off a little bit more, keeps a slightly lower line, loses the back end, very nearly goes into wall. That's going to cost him a lot of time there. Uh, Davidson's going to get cost a bit of time there uh, with that first lap. Going to hope for a better lap here. But of course, what happens when you have that backhand step out a little bit is it does uh it does cost you for that second lap of course uh, you lose a little bit of speed overall edward foster jumping up to first at the moment troy davidson not sitting a bad lap there still sitting second um but yeah did just lose that rear end a little bit but managed to catch it before it got too bad very close to the wall this time much better exit through the corner this should be a better lap for davidson and see how he goes and across the line and Slight improvement there for Davidson. Uh, Blanco Dornak and Josh Carroll Walton jumping up there now. Nigel Patton in second. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mirko there doing a 28.98 as well, matching Troy Davidson. Michael Skurlock just popped in with the fastest lap so far. He's done a 28.73. Uh, five one hundredths faster than Edward Foster in second. 28.78 equal with Aiden Schultz. Aiden Schultz putting in a great uh, first lap there as well. So let's see how he goes. For his second lap. In fact, that was his second lap. My apologies. So that is completed for him. Skurlock up here. Purple section as he just touches the wall there on the way through to complete that lap. And I dare say he's going to have improved. No, just that touch of the wall there costing him right on that second lap. But still sitting in provisional pole. Luke Traher with the 28.89 jumping into fifth. And in fact, my Luke Traher jumping straight up into second place with his second lap around. Just quickly jump on with Ruben Phelps if we can catch him as he completes his second flying lap, moving him up into sixth position. Ruben, one of our uh, more consistent competitors this year, doing and contesting up towards the pointy end of the championship as well. So be looking to consolidate that tonight. We'll jump on board with Igor Berkic, who is out on his second flying lap. 
Yeah, Eagle's gone up into the wall, unfortunately, on his first lap. So he's got some damage on the right front of the car. That's going to cost him a little bit of speed. And all big amount of oversteer there on the exit of the corner. That's going to cost him a lot of time um, as he goes through turn number as turn number two and three there. So that's really effectively ruined that lap. Stephen Williams, meanwhile, jumps up into first place. A really good lap from Stephen Williams there. Uh, at 28.730, very, very close at the top. Uh, we've got a 27, sorry, 28.730, 28.732, 28.734. Uh, that's the difference between first and third at the moment. Unbelievable to watch them there. Basically match identical fastest lap times between William and Skurlock. Is he going to improve that as he completes his second lap around? No, he is not. So really, really tight there. I don't get down into the thousands on my timing screen, but... Uh, 27.3 it's showing for me for the top three drivers, Williams, Skurlock, and Traher. Fantastic effort from those three as we uh, just get towards the end of qualifying. Riley Curtis just finishing up here. Uh, he has done a 29.54 as his fastest lap. He'll start out at 21st. Yeah, absolutely brilliant there. And just so close up at the front. Nothing between those front three cars. Um, you know, <laughs> when you get into times like that, it's just nothing other than that slight little release of the wheel just straightening up the wheel a little bit earlier um just managing to carry a little bit more pace for a corner that it it really is very close when you get down to that sort of time uh, almost identical times there for the top three that is the closest qualifying session we've seen so far this season so right down to fifth position obviously Generally, with this sort of stuff, we see close times, but uh, there's literally only two uh, one-hundredths of a second covering the top five drivers. So amazing for us to see that there are multiple positions where identical times um, have been made by the drivers. So uh, another great qualifying session here for the Ants Car Truck Series. Yeah, that's it. And, and up at the front, Stephen Williams, Michael Scarlett pretty much evenly matched in practice as well. And in practice time, Stephen Williams' best lap was a 28.701. Uh, so Michael Scarlett was a 28.702. So absolutely nothing between those two. Just uh, just the tiniest of margins between them in both qualifying and practice there. This is going to be a juicy race between these guys. Absolutely. So while we can, let's rip through the grid here. We'll cover the front row. It is Stephen Williams on pole position. Michael Scurlock, second place. Another front row for Scurlock. I think that's five, maybe even six weeks in a row for him. Luke Traher, Ed Foster off row two. We've got Aiden Schultz and Lachlan Equesia off row three with Ruben Phelps and JCW, Joshua Carroll Walton off row four, followed by Murkow Titanic and Nigel Patton off row five. Then we go to Troy Davison and Norman Clark off row six as we move Further back into the grid here, Paul Jackson and Tony Gagliardi off row seven with Ryan Jones and Dwayne Priest off row eight. Ryan Ball, Christopher Finlay next off row nine, followed by Cade Donnelly and Brody Masters off row ten. Watch out for Cade to make his way through. Riley Curtis, another one to keep your eye on, and Todd Maxfield off row eleven, followed by Mick Taylor and Jamie Nankervis off row twelve. As we get back through the field before things start, and it is Gary Wellman, followed by Igor Berkic. We've got Matt Patton and Matty Raymond, Nicholas Walsh and Aaron Dillon, Nathan Rawlick. We've got Greg Spencer. And at the rear of the field is Kai Turner in position 33. That is the grid for this evening's race. Thanks to AJ Insurance Services on FGM Ecast, even as we get things underway here. Just let go of the push to talk button there right at the end. And uh, we're going to get away here with Steve Williams and Michael Skurlock at the front of this field. Yeah, FGM Ecast, the uh, new home of Anscar, uh, showing both the trucks and the cup, of course. We'll be back with the cup on the 8th of April at Martinsville. But tonight we are here at Darlington Raceway for round, uh, round eight of the trucks series. It's going to be a interesting one tonight. Stephen Williams right up at the front. We've seen great battles between Williams and Skull all year long. But Luke Traher has been the standout driver this season. Three wins so far. Uh, with only five starts this season, uh, he's, he's only had two bad finishes. Um, and that was at the uh, Daytona race. And I'm trying to think of the other one, the Daytona race there. I have to apologise to Luke Traher, of course. But, uh, yeah, very uh, very close up there. Luke Traher really doing a great job this year and putting a lot of pressure on some of those drivers. But Stadium Williams is, uh, is really out there looking good tonight and looking good for the championship as well. Just a really bit of late mail there. Michael Skurlock just jumping out and jumping into pit lane uh, as we went to take off on our pace lap here. And uh, he will start this race from pit lane. 
Interesting choice there for Scurly. Not sure what the uh, decision behind that one is. Um, obviously, you do get some advantage sometimes starting a bit further back because you can avoid those early incidents. So if there is something bad happens, Scarlet might be in choice positioning. Uh, but of course, when you're a bit further back, it is easier to get caught up in a wreck as well. The uh, big pace truck pulls in to the pit lane and we'll be going green here for the Darlington Raceway here on the FGM, e FGM E-Cast. Absolutely, let's get this one going. Steve Williams here waiting to lead this one away. He's got a very experienced campaign next to him in Edward Foster as we go green. And Ed Foster gets a great start here going right with Stephen Williams at the outset. Luke Traher in third. We've got Lachlan Equizio and Aidan Schultz battling back there in fourth and fifth. Joshua and Carol Walden and Ruben Phelps. We've got Mirko Dotanic, Nigel Patton and Norm Clark rounding out our top ten as things start to settle as we get halfway through lap one. Yeah, everybody's starting to settle down a little bit uh, with that one. We saw a car just dropping back a little bit in the field, uh, but nothing major at the start there. You can see Steve Williams has just managed to get that line. He's going to sit comfortably in that position and try his best to uh, to hold on to that sort of lead at the moment. But Foster's going to sit back there just comfortably behind Stephen Williams from late, not press too hard. You've got Luke Traher there in third and Aiden Schultz there up in fourth. Good qualifying from uh, Aiden Schultz there and good start for him as well. Hopefully some luck will come his way this, this race. Yeah, absolutely. Probably the unluckiest guy on the track over the last couple of weeks, getting caught up in other people's incidents on a number of occasions. So he'll be looking to get through this one with just a nice, clean, consistent race. You see Edward Foster move down to the low line here, and he's going to get the pass done on Stephen Williams and move up into first position. Luke Traher taking advantage as well, along with... Looks like Aiden Schultz may get the job done. No, he's just slot in there, moved up into that high line behind Stephen Williams. Something there, a little wrong with Williams, just suddenly slowed up. Maybe touch the wall on the exit of the turn. Well, looks like Foster actually put Williams just slightly on the uh, wrong part of the line going into the corner there. And Williams just had to check up a little bit more. He was almost touched the wall. He didn't manage, he didn't actually make contact, but it was very close. Foster just surprising Stephen Williams there, causing him to get offline slightly. And that really gave Luke Traher the opportunity to pounce. And Foster is now charging away with this at the moment. He's making a good break out there uh, with. Uh, almost a quarter of a second just over a quarter of a second lead uh, so he's up there and Stephen Williams actually into the wall Stephen Williams up into the wall big big disaster for Williams there so we're just on board here with Aiden Schultz as he got the job done I think Aiden didn't help him but uh, certainly uh, meant that uh, Steve was a little bit pressed for room there as Schultz made a completely clean pass and got the job done on him and that uh, unfortunately did result in that touch in the wall yeah, that's it. I'm just going back to look at it. And yeah, Aiden Schultz was just underneath him. And yes, yeah, Stephen Williams just got unlucky there. He just went up a bit too high, just got off the racing line completely, went up into the wall. Quite a lot of damage on the front of that car already. And that's not going to help his campaign. This is exactly the kind of thing that Stephen Williams does not want to have happening. Uh, as his title rival at the moment, Luke Traher, is up there in second place. He's going to be pretty happy seeing Williams drop back a little bit now. As we're on the front of JCW's car here, as so he gets a good run on Aiden Schultz, currently making his way up into third position on track. So uh, some good early moves here from our front runners, but it's been nice and clean so far here in round eight at Darlington. Yeah, some good racing out there. A lot of these drivers are struggling a bit with grip at the moment as well. So uh, I did hear from a lot of drivers out there that the uh, grip wasn't quite... Uh, quite working for them uh, and it was a bit slick out on the high line uh, sort of the real high line you should say uh, it got a bit slick up there and so a few drivers are struggling a little bit with the car there so expect to see that get worse as the race goes on although you'll start to get a bit of a racing line form around that sort of slightly mid to high line there it's still going to be quite slick on the parts where the cars the trucks aren't going and of course you do get marbles starting to form right at the edge of the circuit and then down at the bottom of this track and as you said it's quite a uh, it's not quite a uh, it's quite a sort of shallow banking as well so those marbles uh, will tend to form up right at the bottom of the line and that can be perilous when you go for an overtake it's just sorting to get a little more congested here at the front as the lead pack closes up. Luke Traher's made a little bit of ground on Ed Foster at the front of this pack. Aiden Schultz driving really well so far tonight. Just holding off Joshua Carroll Walden, who has looked to try and get underneath him a couple of times, just not quite able to get it done. And what that battle has meant is that uh, Lachlan Equesia has pushed up onto the back of this leading five. Yeah, you've got former teammates there of uh, Lachlan Equesia and 
uh, Joshua Carroll Walden there. Um, so former teammates, so they know each other quite well. They're going to know each other's t uh, tricks and uh, the tricks of the trade, things like that. So expect to see them racing hard as Joshua Carroll Walden makes a look down the side of Aiden Schultz. Can't quite make it done yet as Aiden Schultz goes a bit wide. He's going to lose some speed. That's going to give JCW the opportunity to get down underneath Aiden Schultz there. Good save from Schultz, but he might be under pressure from uh, Lachlan now. Uh, Quijo is right on the back of Schultzy. This could be Quijo's turn to get past. Doesn't quite make it stick this time round. Good save from Schultz there. Managed to get the car back online and get the pace back working for it. Meanwhile, front of the field, Foster has got a good lead, steady lead at the moment. Not really putting much uh, much ground over Luke Traher, uh, but Traher is keeping him honest and keeping a bit of a gap from JCW as well. So. Good job at the front there, just managing their pace at the moment, not pushing too hard. But you can see JCW actually is now putting pressure on Luke Traher, just touches the wall. Uh, you can see JCW now on the inside as they go through turns three and four. Side by side there, JCW gets a little bit loose. You're going to see Traher just jump back up in front of him and hold that position. Yeah, really fantastic driving from these drivers here. As you mentioned, um, with the save there for Aiden Schultz, just a light tap of the wall. He's managing to keep that nice and straight and keep going. Testament to his skill uh, in these things. He's come a long way in a very short period of time as he makes good ground there on JCW as well. So it won't be too long before he's knocking away on the back of that truck. Uh, meanwhile, a little bit further down the pack, we've got a battle for 12th and 13th between... The pole sitter and second place man that started from the pit lane, Stephen Williams and Michael Skurlock, uh, both have a little bit of damage on the front of their truck. Skurlock a little bit of damage on the right front at the moment. Uh, Stephen Williams with some damage on the bonnet. You can see Skurlock's going to get a good run here as they go three wide almost there past uh, Troy Davidson and uh, I believe that was Nigel Patton. So great run there from uh, Stephen Williams and Michael Skurlock. Those two are starting to press back with some serious speed as this race starts to go on. Troy Davison there, very lucky, got right up into the wall, which is the damage that he's now oh. got on. Up into the wall again, Nigel Patton just doing a great job avoiding that, but Troy Davidson, I think, is going to pull it into pit lane this time. Yeah, he just unfortunately got there, got up into the wall that first time around. Skurlock and Williams got the run there. That's an amazing job so far from uh, Michael Skurlock. He started dead at last in pit lane and uh, already up to 11th place, so... Definitely a tactic there, I guess, to try and um, help him out at the start, but uh, hasn't uh, impeded him too much on his progress. So, Steve As Williams... We've got a caution out. Gary Wellman involved in that one. Um, just trying to see what happened with that one. Down there on the inside. Let's run that back for a replay. Whoa! Oh. What? That was oh, a wow. big one. <laughs> we've got to wind that back. Uh, let's try and make sense of that one there. Um, look like possibly blinking issues for one of the cars ahead. Um, Eagle, uh, Eagle Bur uh, Burkick was involved in that one as well. Uh, it looks like Gary Wellman may have just blinked there and actually gone into Igor, and that caused uh, Gary Wellman to go absolutely flying up there. Uh, Nathan Rowlett, uh, the real unfortunate person there, he just had nowhere to go. Uh, got the car on all, well, completely off the ground there. He managed to do a uh, bit of a wheelie down the front straight there. Uh, great uh, great wheelie, but not good for the car for sure. Uh, with that, it's like Michael Schumacher inspired helmet livery in the car. But uh, yeah, big, big incident there down the back. And unfortunately, um, Aiden Schultz's bad luck continues as those cars made their way back down and around Schultz, uh, just unable to avoid an impact um, on the right-hand front. Uh, I think it may well have been of Igor, Igor Berkic's car. Uh, actually, no, my apologies. It was Nathan Rollick. Yeah, that was very unlucky there. Uh, Aiden Schultz, um, he basically couldn't see where he was going there. Uh, up in front of him, he had Luke Traher. Uh, basically just in front of him and the smoke was so thick couldn't see what was happening and then he just catches the front of the uh of the 49 it was eagle burkick that caught uh the, the um aiden schultz got caught into there unfortunately but nothing uh, no one at fault there unfortunately eagle couldn't have done anything he did the right thing holding his brakes unfortunately aiden couldn't see what was happening there and got caught in that incident 
So very, very unfortunate as we see a raft of drivers, as you would expect, get through pit lane. Um, in fact, pretty much the entire field at this stage, uh, Merkau Titanic has decided not to jump into pit lane yet, and he is currently in first place. Yeah, so Merkau there, just staying just out, just uh, getting a lap led there. That's going to give him a bonus point, so uh, not a bad call. He's going to come in now, get the uh, pit stop done. Uh, you can sometimes lose a little bit of time doing it this way, but you get a clear pit lane, so you don't have to worry about uh, all the kerfuffle in the actual pit lane itself. Uh, and you're on those slightly fresher tyres as well, so uh, he doesn't have to worry about cars jostling around for position. Uh, meanwhile, up the front, Edward Foster had a good pit stop there, keeping ahead of Luke Trahair, Joshua Carroll Weldon behind, and Lachlan Urquio in fourth, with Ryan Jones making his way up the field. Ryan Jones making up nine positions so far this race, up into sixth spot. A fantastic drive. They were just having a look through the field, and yeah, a, a great run from Ryan. Uh, shouldn't be too surprised. Actually, he's put in a couple of strong performances so far in his time in the series. So uh, looking forward to seeing how he goes for the remainder of this race as well. But uh, for, my, for mine, obviously experience uh, considered, but uh, Michael Skurlock, uh, amazing. So far, last of field. It'll indicate on your timing monitors he's actually down five positions because he did qualify in second place. Uh, however, has started from pit lane and has currently run from the back of the field up to seventh place. Now, we're just going to grab up quickly from the infield care centre the uh, Mark 1 eSport driver, Aiden Schultz, and have a quick chat to him about that incident. Aiden Schultz, uh, unfortunate there. We saw the incident happen and looked like you had absolutely nowhere to go there. Yeah, Carl, very, very unfortunate that one. I was uh, running well in that one. I was really comfortable and... Uh, we all sort of went low. We saw the car with the new smoke model. It's a little bit hard. And, um, yeah, I was, I was following the front three just in behind it, ready to uh, go under caution and just clipped him. And that's my night done, unfortunately. So a really disappointing end to uh, a really good start for the Mark 1 number 52 uh, truck tonight. A real shame there. We saw you having a good run. You really need to move away from that ladder factory next to that black cax entry because it's not working out for you, Aiden. It's not, but I can say, uh, well, tonight I can use the black cat as an excuse because uh, that definitely was a bit of uh, unluckiness. But uh, the other ones uh, in the last couple of weeks, if you don't put yourself in those positions, you, uh, you're you not there to have that wreck. But I'm really disappointed about that one tonight. I I thought we were quick and um, we, were, we had something for the boys at the front. So disappointed to be out so early. Thank you so much, Aiden. We'll catch you later. We're going back to green here at Darlington Raceway. Absolutely there, Aiden Schultz, the unluckiest man so far in truck racing. We're sure that will change soon with the level of driving he puts into it. But as we get away from Aiden Schultz, Ed Foster gets away on the restart here. He's got Luke Traher right behind him. We'll run through the top 10, followed by Joshua Carroll Walden, Ryan Jones, Lachlan Equisio. We've got Michael Skurlock, Ruben Phelps. Great move from Ruben. Norm Clark. And we've got Ryan Bull and Cade Donnelly. We told you to watch out for him. Currently up into 10th position. Yeah, good run there from Cade. Uh, Ruben Phelps as well having another good run. We've got another caution out. Got another caution out. Oh, I think Aaron Dillon involved in that one, I think. And... And a... So, uh, two incidents in that one, actually. Mirko Dornak a little bit further behind, uh, up into the wall, and he's gone down and had a big incident. Aaron Dillon got caught just behind him. Uh, looks like uh, looks like somebody just caught Aaron at the back there, just trying to figure out who that was, uh, and that just that caused was... that big incident there. Jamie Nankervis, I believe, involved in that incident. Couldn't see if he was the cause, but certainly involved in that incident uh, with Aaron Dillon. Yeah, I think Jamie was just slightly ahead there, and Jamie got caught up. Um, Jamie Nankervis there just got caught by Aaron Dillon as he went up there. Uh, it was Dwayne Priest there. Just, just looks like uh, he's been travelling along. Aaron Dillon's come up a little bit early and just got caught up with both of those. So big, big incident back there. Um, and as well, unfortunately, Moko Dortak as well had a had a crash on his own, and that caused him to have a uh, to, well, that's caused him to be out of the race as well. A few casualties early on. We did say it was going to be tricky out there tonight with this slick track. Yeah, grip certainly the factor uh, even this early on 
in the race, or you'd say it's late on in this in the race, you'd expect the track to have gripped up a little bit by now, but uh, not to be. Yeah, that's it. And with these cautions, of course, it's going to make it a little bit trickier. The track is going to be cooling down a bit too. Uh, as it switches to night here, you'll lose, the track temperature will start going down a little bit and that will help tire wear for these drivers. Um, but it is still very tricky. It, it's a tricky track as well, Darlington. It can catch a few people out because you do have to run that high line. Uh, you are always so perilously, perilously close to the wall. And one of the big things, of course, that has changed on a lot of these tracks is the introduction of the safer barriers that were put into all of these oval tracks in the uh, early 2000s. And they tend to have a little jut uh, from them. So they tend to have a little bit of a jut out of the wall at the beginning of the actual uh, corner. And then they edge back into the corner itself on the exit. And sometimes that can cause you trouble because uh, although these tracks are very much used to it now, uh, you can still get caught out by it because the tracks sort of weren't designed for it initially. Yes, yeah, so plenty of changes coming through here that are uh, impacting on uh, the racing for the guys, but it does make it more realistic, and that's what we love, of course, as uh, the lights go out on the pace truck. Just waiting for it to come into focus there. I believe it has. So we will go green flag racing again. No, I've just got in there just before it's going to go out. So we are one more lap under the caution before the pace truck pulls in and we head off racing again mentioned early on in the stream thanks to aj insurance services for their support of our broadcast if you're uh, looking for insurance advice give the uh, guys at aj insurance services a call joe daly a very big participant in the iRacing community so uh, do support one of our fellow competitors and uh, give him a uh, call or get in contact with him. He's probably pretty busy with flood stuff at the moment in New South Wales, but uh, always makes time to have a chat. So uh, if you're looking for that type of help, give them a call. Yeah, absolutely. And just mentioning the floods that are going on at the moment, we wish everybody affected by that all the best, of course. Uh, very, very disastrous situations. Uh, it's been a strange 12 months. We had fires last year, floods this year, but... Uh, Neither of those occasions are easy to deal with, and we wish everybody all the best who have been caught up in that. So Oops. Foster up in the lead, now Traher on the outside once again. Ryan Jones up into fourth now. He is working his way up the field, uh, almost like the Terminator, just directly coming up the field. Nothing seems to be stopping him at the moment. He was very, very competitive last week, and uh, hassling at the front of the pack, so... Looking to uh, improve the result, as uh, last week he did finish second to Luke Traher, so he'll be looking to go one better this week if he can. Yeah, that's it, and uh, of course trying to get a little bit more of his championship standings up there. Of course, not full-time runner, uh, only run four races this season, uh, but that's not to say you can't do a lot on small amounts of running. Pace truck has come in, we'll be going back to green flag racing very very shortly, Edward Foster is going to lead us away. The green flag is going to come out. Foster drops the hammer quite quickly. He gets a good jump there over Luke Traher. Uh, Joyce, Joshua Carroll, probably the one that's been caught out the most, as Ryan Jones is going to try and squeeze down. Doesn't quite have the room at the moment. Gets caught a little bit high on those slightly cooler tyres. That's going to give JCW the opportunity to get underneath him and maybe get up there. Uh, Michael Scarlock as well, just behind this battle, really doing a great job of recovery uh, from starting in pit lane, coming right back to the front of this field. At uh, some vast rates of not, that car has got some speed underneath it. And uh, Ryan Jones there getting very lucky. Got pretty loose uh, when he was held up into the wall by Joshua Carroll Walden. Just managing to hold onto it there with the cooler tyres and the low grip. Um, doing a great job to keep uh, that triple one entry off the wall. Yeah, brilliant job. At the moment in the 43, Luke Traher is getting a good run. Oh, we got a lot of smoke in the background. I think it was just somebody getting loose. Uh, yep, somebody just getting loose. That's okay. Um, Luke Traher getting a good run at the moment. He's going to try and get behind Foster, use a little bit of that draft to get a run on him, and then you'll probably see him jump down into turn, probably, I'd say probably turns one and two to be safe, uh, but he's got to try and get that run on Foster at the moment. JCW, Josh Carroll is putting the pressure on him, so he's going to have to drive defensively, and that's going to give Foster the chance to start running away with this one. Well, we can just oh, big wreck! Big wreck behind them! 
Uh, Tony Gagliardi involved in that one. A huge wreck down the back straight there. Uh, 16 has gone down into him. Um, the 16 of Todd Maxfield up into the wall there. And a big, big crash down in the mid-pack there. And we have gone yellow flag. We'll just pull that one back up on the screen here. Let's have a look at what happened there. So, yeah, as you can see there, uh, Todd Maxwell just going up into the wall, went down into uh, Gigliardi there. Uh, the one that got very lucky was Matthew Raymond there. He will have, uh, uh, if he was sitting on a lump of coal, it would probably turned into a diamond. Just going to bring up here the replay. We actually will go on board with Matthew Raymond and just have a look at what he gets to see. The driver's saying that the, uh, the smoke that comes through now is uh, very, very... Hard to see what goes on. Actually, probably a little bit too close up there. We might even need to jump back a little bit further back in the pack. There it is there on board with Troy Davison. You just see how thick that smoke is and how hard it is for people to see coming through those incidents. So um, very difficult for the drivers to make sure that, or as best they can, make sure they get out of the way of uh, some of these incidents. Yeah, it, it's really been a game changer on the oval tracks. Um, I don't do much racing on the, uh, on the street slash road circuits myself uh, but it uh, is a big thing on the oval tracks of course because you're traveling at such speed when a car goes round, you get a lot more smoke off the wheels more often in that respect so it becomes very hard to see especially if there's more than one car involved uh, we've seen a couple of times on some of the much faster speedways big big crashes since smoke has come out and uh, a few of the official races i've been competing in uh, have been decided by the smoke of a car spinning in front of them. Uh, just not being able to see where you're going, you almost just have to close your eyes and hope for the best. It's a bit like the uh, trucks running at um, uh, Eldora uh, the weekend where that really thick mud was coming up on the windscreen. They couldn't see a thing after lap one. Uh, you have that same situation. You just gotta rely on the spotter telling you where things are and just hope for the best. Yeah, absolutely. We put some footage of that up on our Facebook page and it was uh, you couldn't see a damn thing you'd be leaning with your head out the window <laughs> trying to see what's going on but uh, the uh, the smoke model here doesn't necessarily affect the circuit racing as much because we don't seem to have these high speed slides uh, that you do get during the trucks with the uh, the lock up so we don't tend to see it as much but um, I'm sure I will at some stage but I was just jumping back here to Steve Williams so he's currently sitting in 12th now pole sitter so uh, did touch the wall a little early on. He's just been uh, jogging on the spot a little bit. One thing about Steve Williams is he does manage his race very well, so albeit he'll be disappointed not to be up at the front at this point in time. We're only 30 laps into a 100-lap race here, and uh, he's currently in 12th position with very, very minor damage to that car. So uh, albeit not where he wants to be, probably well positioned for a run towards the end of this race. Well, it, it, with that damage, if he can finish in the top 20, he's going to be happy with that. If he can finish in the top 10, I think he'll be ecstatic. Obviously, he would prefer to win, but it's going to help preserve his championship lead. As I said, he's got such a big lead at the moment of 74 points. If he can just keep finishing solid results as the season goes on, just finishing in the top 10, that's all he needs to do. Um, as we've only got four races left after this one, of course, next time up we are on a road circuit, the circuit with the Americas, uh, 45 laps of that on the 5th of April, of course. Uh, so a little bit of a different track there. We'll see some very different drivers getting up to the front of that one, I'm sure. But with that lead at the moment, it's really... Uh, he's it, it, got to have some disastrous results for Luke Trahad to catch him, really. Um, so Sim Williams has just got to play the uh, the game, of just not pushing too hard, just keeping in the top 20, keeping in the top 10 positions, and just finishing the races, and he should be able to keep that championship lead uh, relatively intact to the end. An interesting point you make, actually, because uh, he will be up the front, Steve Williams, very strong on circuit, and uh, you'd expect Luke Trahad will be as well. So uh, we'll see uh, how they get on next week it's going to be really really interesting but of course we've got plenty of time to go here to resolve this one 69 uh, sorry my apologies 59 laps remaining uh in this one and uh no i'll get it right in a minute it is 60 yeah. <laughs> 60 <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, remaining in this one it's very it's only monday night my goodness me um remaining in this one and there's still plenty to come here so as we get ready to go racing again it's going to be ed foster luke Trahair on our front row we've got josh carroll walden and ryan jones behind him michael skirlock aquijo phelps clark bull and donnelly rounding out your top 10 as we go green flag running and again ed foster with a strong start traher's gone with him carroll walden's gone with him as well as ryan jones so 
uh, up and aware to the tactics. This is what happens when we get a few yellows in a row. The drivers get used to the start or the restart attempts of the lead driver and generally tend to close that gap and go with them. That's what's happened here. Michael Skurlock right up behind Ryan Jones as well. Ruben Phelps not too far off. So we've got quite a congested lead pack here as Lock and Equesia goes past Ruben Phelps for fifth position. Uh, sorry, my apologies. Sixth position there. And uh, it's very congested at the front here. Yeah, great start between Lockie and uh, uh, Phelps there. Those two were side by side for a good lap uh, as they were coming across the line. They really put some pressure on each other, um, doing a great job of keeping those cars alive because it's not easy to keep side by side here. Uh, it is a little bit of a single line track sometimes. Uh, you can get those that second line working for you, but it's not easy. It does take a lot of talent to run side by side here. And that's what we saw with those two drivers. But Foster has not got quite the lead he's had before. You've got Traher now. He's more focused on the car in front of him, it seems, than the car behind him. He's going to try and put some pressure on Foster, try his best to get a move done. But it's very hard to do. It's all oh, Traher's gone into the wall. And that's going to give Ryan Jones the opportunity as he gets past Joshua Carroll Walden. JCW tried to make the move, but Jones saw it beforehand. He used Traher's little bump into the wall to jump around both cars. Two cars in one corner. Great job for Ryan Jones. Absolutely. We're just on board there, able to see that little bump that Traher did with the wall. And Jones capitalising the quickest uh, ahead of Joshua Carroll Walden, who is down into fourth position as a consequence of that changeover. Just got a little bit loose, Traher, up into the wall there. It's given Foster some breathing room. There's that a little bit further back in the background there. I think it was Riley Curtis we could see making a move on Norm Clark uh, going down into the turn. Yes, he is indeed. So the move's going on all the way down the pack here, but it is Ryan Jones now up into second, trying to chase down a very fast Ed Foster at the front. Yeah, got to give some serious credit there to Joshua Carroll Waldman uh, because he was looking to make a move on Luke Traher there. He was going to pounce out, but Ryan Jones just managed to make the jump quicker. Got beside got beside JCW, boxed him into Luke Traher, and that was the key to that move. Uh, it could have been so easy for JCW to move out from behind uh, Luke Traher in the 43 and have a massive crush at the front, but those drivers, brilliant situational awareness, not making the move there, and Saved, both, saved all of their race cars, you've got to say. But Ryan Jones and taking the advantage in the triple one car and getting up there. And now he's going to start chasing down Foster and putting pressure on him. Just saw again there, JCW just getting a little loose, just managing to avoid the wall. So grip's still a big issue, even for the top drivers here. So they're struggling to just make these things stick. But uh, JCW now making a move down underneath Luke Traher. That'll put pressure on him. Just as what, well to manage it there. What it might do is let Skurlock have an opportunity at attacking JCW now. Uh, you can see he lost a bit of speed there uh, when he made that move. Couldn't quite make it stick. And then Michael Skurlock right behind him, putting on the pressure. Just a little bit further back, you've got Norman Clark getting passed by Riley Curtis. Riley Curtis doing a great job there. But uh, Luke, uh, uh, Joshua Carroll Walden, sorry, just lost that little spit of speed as he tried to make that move. Couldn't make it stick at the moment. And I think that's going to be the issue for these guys up at the front. They're not going to be able to make moves stick easily because they're struggling to run that lower line. It's all oh, Traher into the ball big time that time. He's going to lose a lot of speed. This is going to give Skurlock the opportunity to do a Ryan Jones-esque move running between the two cars. JCW and Traher comes up there. Lachlan Urquio into the wall now. He's gone up into the wall, lost a lot of speed, and that's given Ruben Phelps the opportunity to get up there as well. Phelps getting lucky there as well. That could have ended a disaster for him, but uh, just managing to make his way around as well. So few drivers here just struggling a little bit with the grip factor and uh, changes for positions as Joshua Carroll Walden now gets down on the inside of Luke Traher and he just gets that job done and closes that out. So Luke Traher down into fifth as a consequence of that uh, little bit of a lapse. Yeah, you got to say, JCW is probably absolutely pleased to be past Traher at the moment just because of those little taps on the ball. He was the, other than Traher himself, he was the driver that got affected most, allowing Skurlock and Jones to get past him because he had to take that avoiding action and lost the speed because of it. So now he's going to get back on it, try get back up to Skurlock. But there is a good gap between them. There's almost a second gap between Skurlock and Joshua Carroll Walden. So... They have pulled out a good lead over those cars. Edward Foster, meanwhile, at the front, has a half-second lead over Ryan Jones. So Foster doing a great job up front, just preserving that lead and uh, just keeping that car where he wants to. It's keep to he's keeping it nice and clean, 
Uh, not putting too much pressure on it. Same as Jones, just, just running that car to a good pace at the moment. There's still a long way to go in this race. 58 laps remaining. So a lot to go on still, and many things can happen. Yeah, so all of these drivers did pit last on lap 16. So in terms of tyre life, all on the same strategy. Matty Raymond, the latest driver to pit on lap 28. Um, and uh, he has the freshest tyres. Not really helping him so much at this point in time. Um, but as things were on, he will start to make his way up the field if we continue this green flag running. The big thing for Matty Raymond is it's going to give him the opportunity to run a slightly different strategy to these guys. Uh, of course, you might see the, this group of drivers up the front needing to make a green flag pit stop and that is going to hurt you at Darlington you're going to lose a lap if you pit under green here so if Matty Raymond can stick out there for a, a nice long length and get lucky with a caution uh, he could be in a winning position for it it depends of course on how these drivers can keep those tires alive um, and also keep fuel going uh, from practice i think it was around about 90 laps of fuel if i remember correctly so they should be all roughly okay on fuel um but uh, of course that was me in practice just piddling around not going at full race pace so sometimes we do get caught out by that one uh but we're probably going to see oh as ryan jones up into the wall there into turn number uh turn number two uh, ryan jones just catching the wall there a little bit of a hit there for him and that's going to affect him a little bit further in this race uh but as I was saying, the big thing is going to be pit stops. If they need to pit under green, it's going to look good for Matty Raymond if they get a late caution when all these guys have pitted in. I feel like maybe Trujillo might have burnt his tyres a little quicker than everyone else. He's still struggling for grip out there. Uh, just getting passed by Riley Curtis now, but down into seventh position. Well, as great as Luke Trujillo's driving has been this season, and you cannot say he has not been good, and he has had some great tyre-saving skills. You have to remember Luke Trahaire is still very new to oval racing. So it can be one of those things where you can get caught out on tracks like Darlington because they are a little bit different to some of the more conventional ovals. And they can sometimes catch you out. Of course, he's got the Virtual Motorsport Mentorship Program underneath him. Crank Esport, great team himself, Michael Skullock, and of course... Um, Chris Burnell. Chris Burnell, there we go. Thank you very much. Chris Burnell, of course, uh, leading that team. Very experienced drivers there. Uh, but he is one of the newer drivers to the series. So, you know, experience does sometimes pay off. He's in a great battle now with Riley Curtis. He was trying to get side by side with Riley Curtis. He seems to get some speed back now, but Norman Clark is catching as well as Lachlan Urquio there. So looking like it's going to be a good fight for sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Ruben Phelps, meanwhile, has made, managed to make a bit of a lead on those guys, and it's time to catch up to JCW ahead of him. We've just seen a change for second place here with Michael Skurlock moving up over Ryan Jones and uh, getting a run on there. So, uh, again, perhaps a little bit of tyre conservation. I didn't see if Jones touched the wall. It did. There was a huge differential in speed, so um, maybe something there affecting the outcome as uh, Joshua Carroll Walden now uh, sets his eyes down on Ryan Jones as well. Just as you were talking there, Stuart, Ryan Jones went up into the wall again. Uh, quite a bit of damage to that right front now of that car. You can see the uh, the front fender has been completely bent in. That front right tyre is now almost completely visible on that car. So, Just struggling a little bit there for grip, one would say. But he's done a marvellous job so far of getting up into third place. So these guys now might be really hoping that there is a caution period so they can get in the pits and get some fresh rubber on these trucks. So as we uh, get back here, just a, a little bit of a little bit of an issue there with some of the commentary. So we get back into it here. Start. So I think we've got Carl back with us now. Hopefully, Not sure what happened there. Just a few technical gremlins this evening, but uh, we're back and uh, running again.
to Ryan Jones here. Under pressure, it is Joshua Carroll Walden down on the inside of him there. It looks like he might get the job done, and he does indeed. So he moves himself up into third position. And uh, Ryan Jones now looking like he's going to be under attack from Ruben Phelps. Just seeing if he can get the job done there. Just had a little bit of a drama here with the broadcast for Carl. So we'll uh, try and get him back into it here. In the meantime, we'll hold the ship steady. So Edward Foster continues with a 1.25 second gap at the front here. 54 laps in. 46 to go for the math done there for you. But Michael Skirlock sitting in second place. A great drive from him. Back up into his qualifying position. He did have to start this one from pit lane. Uh, I'm not sure too sure why he had to start it from pit lane, but he did. And he's now back into the groove up into second place. I think we might have Carl back with us now. Looks like we uh, we still don't quite have Carl back now, but um, we will... Oh, oh no, there we are. You're back. Beautiful. So I just had a couple of issues there with the Discord. No, that's fine. It, uh, I think it might have been at both ends, actually. Just Discord having a little fit there. But um, what I'm going to do now is jump on to Ryan Jones, who has dropped right back here. As uh, Todd Maxfield looks like he's jumped into pit lane. He's had an issue. Hasn't caused a caution period for us. Much to the dismay of the drivers, but Ryan Jones now falling back through the pack. He's currently in 18. He may want to consider jumping into pit lane uh, to get a new set of rubber on that. It's starting to affect his race as he's now down with Stephen Williams and Norm Clark in uh, eighth position. Yeah, just noticing as well, Brody Masters has come into pit lane. Um, quite a bit of damage on that car, though, but uh, he has come into pit lane now for some... Uh, for a pit stop so we might see some drivers considering that pit stop relatively soon as we've got 43 laps remaining of this race we are on lap 57 of course uh, still showing some strong pace out front um not obviously about two seconds off the uh the pace with fresh tires but last time round it was a 30 point uh 30.4 for foster 30.5 for Skurlock. so they've still got some good pace out there uh, but we are seeing some cars coming in. Lachlan Urquio is coming in this time around. And there's a caution out. Caution is out. It's Tony Gagliardi there struggles with some issue. And that has ultimately meant that he's ended up in the wall. We'll jump back and have a replay of that one. See what happened there to Gagliardi. Um, hopefully get that all working. Uh, it's been a big impact. Single car incident down. In the uh, into the wall at the bottom of the track, so I'm not too sure how he's just uh, lost it there and ended up down into the pit wall at the bottom of the track. So uh, it looks like his night may be over, but that has called a caution, much to the relief of a majority of our drivers. Now we'll jump into pit lane. Yeah, and uh, he sort of did that almost in front of the leaders. Good job holding the brake there from Gagliardi. Um, so very good job for him to hold that brake and that's one of those important things for oval racing is holding brakes uh you, you see it sometimes where people let go they think they're going to roll down and just get, get out of everybody's way unfortunately that's not how it works you end up trying to avoid the people and having a huge crash a uh, person this might work out for is uh lachlan Urquia, i think uh, just because he was making his pit stop when that caution came out so uh, we might see Lachlan Urquio just jump up a few positions here, maybe. Um, just just see how that goes, because he had just come into pit lane before that caution came out, I think. And uh, just an apology there to Brian, just complaining about the uh, quality of the, sh the graphics in the stream tonight. Brian, I think it might, unfortunately, be at your end, because uh, I'm just having a look at the stream live here, and uh, it's uh, it's certainly out in a, uh, a full 1080 um, stream, so apologies there if... Uh, there's something that's causing it not to work, but um, we've just double-checked on it, and uh, it is uh, coming across uh, live and clear. Um, so uh, hopefully that's the same for uh, everyone else out there tonight. Yeah, uh, quick uh, off and on again situation maybe there. There's been a couple of issues tonight. Unfortunately, I'm having a couple of issues with Discord myself, so I apologise about the uh, silence there and the disconnections, uh, but hopefully that will be the end of technical difficulties tonight. 
Um, but it's going to be interesting now to see what happens with these cars out there. Of course, this is basically given uh, those guys at the front a reprieve. This hasn't worked out well for people like Matthew Raymond, uh, although he has made up some good positions. He's made his way up into ninth place. That's 19 positions gained in that in this race so far. So those slightly um, slightly fresher tyres did end up working for him a bit in that last dint. So things have paid off for a little bit for him there. Uh, so that is always good to see. I guess the good news from his perspective is that he's been able to make progress through the field. His truck's still in um, basically uh, showroom condition uh, and he's been able to pit with the rest of the field and maintain that. So uh, he's very, very well placed. Luke Trahair just in front of him there with uh, you know a fair bit of damage to the back of that truck um, and uh, obviously dropping down the field a little bit because of that tyre degradation that he was struggling with. So not all bad news for Matty Raymond, certainly up 19 positions, as you said, and, uh, and positioned very well. Yeah, another driver that's had a good run this race is Riley Curtis, of course, Mark 1 Esport. Um, he seems to be uh, the driver that's having a bit better luck than some of his teammates at the moment. Uh, but he's up there in P5. He's gained 16 positions tonight. So good job from Riley Curtis. Nice to see him up there uh, fighting up the top. Always nice to see Riley up there, a veteran of the series. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, uh, I was just trying to look back to when that last caution period was. Um, we had, so I think we had basically a, uh, a, 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 what was it, 42 lap run, green flag run there. So tyres on those trucks, very, very old. So, you know, 16 laps difference in terms of pit stops. I know Troy Davison at this stage hasn't jumped into pit lane yet either. He did last pit on lap 28. So uh, definitely uh, the fresher tyre is going to suit uh, a number of these drivers who would have been struggling towards the end of uh, that green flag period. Yeah, Troy Davidson there. He, um, I think he was the lucky dog. He's currently going around at the moment. So that probably explains why he hasn't jumped into pit lane. Um, he's going to He's probably going to want to actually have jumped in now, though, to get some fresh tyres on there, because that's going to really affect him on the restart. He's going to really struggle towards the end of this race as they start lining up two by two here, a bit of a Noah's Ark situation as they get side by side. You've got Foster and Skurlock at the front. Skurlock, we've seen, has got some great pace in that car, but Foster has almost been untouchable all night long. Uh, when he's out there in clean air, he has been very fast. Pace car is back into pit lane. We're going to go green here again. Foss is probably going to launch it early. He does indeed. Gets a good start there. Good jump over Michael Skurlock. His teammate, Josh Carroll-Walden, also gets a good run on Skurley as well. They're going to go side by side into the first corner. But JCW, importantly, has got his nose ahead at the moment. They get a little bit of a wiggle through the corner. And that's given Skurlock the chance to get a better run. Joshua Carroll-Walden down low. Oh, getting big a bit Lewis of a Jones. And Jones behind him, losing the car on the exit of the corner. Gets oversteer, back end steps out. Big, big incident for him. And it has remained green at the moment. So big, big loser for there for Jones, but also for JCW, who lost has lost a handful of positions. Ruben Phelps, meanwhile, has gained up into third place. So good job for Phelps on that restart. Yeah, I was going to mention it just before we went the uh, back to green running. Ruben Phelps just quietly moved himself up into fourth position there in another mint condition truck. So uh, he is well placed to contest this one as we get towards the end of the race. Yeah, very impressed with Ruben Phelps this year uh, in the Activity Hub Bali team. Um, really, really good job in both the trucks and the cup series. Uh, been having some great runs, some brilliant performances and has been up there in the top 10 all year round and you've got to say up there on pace as well so definitely one of those drivers to watch out for for the future uh meanwhile maddie raymond is putting pressure on uh, trying to put some pressure on norman clark there's a bit of a gap between them at the moment but you've got to expect to see uh, norman clark trying to catch up to luke traher at the moment in sixth position who's got a little bit of damage in that car going to be losing a little bit of speed uh, meanwhile joshua carroll is going to put the pressure on reuben phelps he tries a big move up there or into uh, turns one and two. Doesn't quite make it stick. Uh, gets a little bit loose and almost went up into the wall. Uh, so he's going to have to drop off a little tiny bit this time around and then make another attack in a lap or two's time. As you see him moving right up behind Phelps here. Just not quite able to get the move done. But uh, he is just having a cheeky look around and seeing if he can uh, maybe try and 
worry Ruben into it. I don't think Ruben will be too concerned at this point in time. He, uh, he's been driving exceptionally well, so he will just continue to push on in the activity hub. Bali 06 car as uh, we hit lap 68. And uh, he is well positioned. Yeah, in a good position at the moment and good to hear from Brian Willard. The uh, stream is much better on his end after a quick restart, so that's good news for that side of things. Uh, often, sometimes, good old technical issues, though they are always fun to have. But the battle for third and fourth is really heating up as Joshua Carroll gets a good run here on Ruben Phelps. He's going to try for that inside line. We've seen it's been a tricky one to get working. He's going to try and get the up and over now. Tries to get the power down. Can't quite make it work. Ruben Phelps is still going to hold on to third position, but JCW is all over the back of that activity hub barley car. Absolutely. Just not quite enough grip there for JCW to get the job done. He'll keep working. Plenty of time left here. Lots of drivers both on fresh rubber, so... I won't want to burn them up too early either. Might be a better strategy for him just to sit in behind Phelps for the minute. And just manage this one. Of course, though, Joshua Carroll Warden about to come under attack from Riley Curtis as well, who's up 16 places, driving a great race for the uh, Mark 1 esports team there and uh, currently bearing down on the back of JCW. Yeah, it's we've seen some really good drive start and some impressive movers tonight as well. Meanwhile, up the front, Foster and Skullock still started trying to battle, but Foster does have the edge there. The main battle is that third, fourth and fifth position. Uh, you've got those cars all lying abreast at the moment, and it is going to be a very good fight once they get close enough. Almost seems like Phelps is just not pushing as hard as the guys behind him. He's just easing off a little bit, maybe just trying to keep the tyres a little bit more alive for later in this race. We still have 29 laps remaining, of course, so maybe not pushing as hard as the guys around him, just to keep a little bit more life in there. Uh, and that's given Riley Curtis the opportunity to get right up behind Joshua Carroll in the 35. Yeah, this is definitely where it's at. Um, we've seen uh, Traher and uh, Norm Clark drop off drop off the back here. Norm Clark under attack a little bit from Matty Raymond. Uh, we've got Kay Donnelly and Steve Worms with Ryan Bull all battling down for 9th, 10th and 11th at the moment. Worms in a, uh, a reasonably damaged truck at the moment as well. So he is uh, fighting to maintain this one for a, as reasonable a result as he can get as Lachlan Aquijo goes past Christopher Finlay for position 13 and it looks like we've got Riley Curtis about to try and make a move on JCW as well. Yeah, they are getting so close to each other and you see that Joshua Carroll just getting very, very close, still perilously close there and that's just going to mean he's going to lift off a little bit of speed there. Riley Curtis is going to put that pressure on. Uh, you might be able to just see in the back of the picture as well those three cars, Luke Traher, Norman Clark and uh, Ray Matty Raymond there. Those guys are also getting close to each other, but Riley Curtis is now going down the inside of Joshua Carroll Walden. He's actually going to make it stick by the looks of things. Really nice move there from Riley Curtis, just straight down the inside, kept that car nice and clean, didn't lose any traction. Brilliant job there for Riley Curtis getting past JCW. Yeah, nice clean move there. No surprise either, given the drivers involved. Is that Mark 1 Esports car of Riley Curtis now up 17 positions into P4 and he'll now be trying to chase down Ruben Phelps. Yeah, he's, it, and you've got to say, Riley Curtis seems to be having a good car for it at the moment. Ruben Phelps is holding up there, though. He's doing a great job of keeping it up in the top three and that's exactly what he wants to do. Um, might just quickly grab as it looks like we've got a little bit of time on the track. So, oh, actually, Norman Clark into the wall. That's going to give Matty Raymond the opportunity to get past him for seventh place. Matty Raymond just down the front straight there. Easy done there as Norman Clark unfortunately just tagged the wall a little bit. That's good news for Matthew Raymond, who's made another position in this race. So far, um, we've got about 18 of the trucks left in this one, and uh, we've got 16 of them on the lead lap. Troy Davison uh, the last of those cars. So Jamie and Curvis, if we do get another caution period, we'll get that lucky dog. But uh, at the moment, it, uh, things are reasonably calm. They are. And just in the infield care centre, I've got Ryan Jones just going to grab him up quickly and ask what happened there. 
Ryan Jones, uh, hope we're not really a welcome to the booth, unfortunately up in the booth. What happened to you in that last run? <laughs> she took off on me out of turn two. Um, I don't know, I, in retrospect, I know exactly what happened. Uh, when, he, when he came out of turn two, I don't know if you talked about it, the track sort of rises up um, when it, as it flattens out to go into the back straight and the car gets loose up out of, out of that corner when you get the power down. And I had a really good run on those three cars in front off the restart because um, Jahir was checking uh, trek them up. Oh, sorry, Skirlock checked them up. Um, and so I tried to turn left right at that moment where the car, got some, the car gets loose and it just took off. It was um, uncatchable. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate incident there. Looks like you had some good pace up into that position. Hopefully we'll see you back uh, again soon and uh, hopefully have you back in the booth for some better circumstances. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Ryan Jones, there. So, just, so up at the front, it is getting quite close between Foster and Skurlock. Yeah, absolutely. So we're just keeping an eye there on Ruben Phelps for Riley Curtis. But as you mentioned, it got a tenth now between Foster and Skurlock. 22 laps to go here. And Skurlock has closed right up on the back of Edward Foster. So the race is on for the lead. Yeah, we've, we've uh, seen these two battle a fair few times, a lot of experience between these two drivers and uh, a fair bit of trust between them as well. So they will be quite happy racing with each other. Foster seems to favour that slightly higher line. Skurlock, that slightly lower line. You can see it in each turn. Um, Foster just going down a little bit more on the exit. Skurlock staying a little bit higher on the exit himself. So different driving styles here coming into play as well. Always interesting to see. Uh, when drivers do take slightly different lines, who's going to come out with the best the best line for the race itself, of course. Uh, but as these two start battling, this has given Ruben Phelps and Riley Curtis the opportunity to start catching up to the leaders. Uh, they have made almost... Uh, they've, they've got the gap to almost one and a half seconds now, and they are slowly catching these guys at the front. Yeah, we'll just keep an eye on that here, jump up into the blimp and have a look at uh, that gap. But uh, you can see what you're talking about there with a slightly, ever so slightly different lines, entry and exit to the corner. Something that we've spoken about plenty of times with Michael Skurlock. This uh, does enjoy doing his own thing and he's very quick at it. So works for him as we start to come up on to the first of our back markers. You see there at the bottom of your screen, Ruben Phelps, Riley Curtis battling away as well. Uh, that gap at the moment at around about one and a half seconds between Foster, our race leader, and Ruben Phelps in third position. So we'll keep an eye on that gap as uh, they do approach, I believe, Nigel Patton. Yeah, they start to approach him, Nigel Patton, just getting a little bit loose there. Um, and uh, I think Jamie Nakmer as well. They're just, there was a little bit of looseness between them, but uh, Skurlock is really, really pressuring Foster on the low line at the moment. He is almost uh, almost teasing Foster and just trying to uh, try to get him to look in the mirrors rather than looking out front of the car, just trying to distract Foster. Uh, probably not going to work on Foster. He is an uh, experienced, experienced driver in the series, but Skurlock is trying every move in the book at the moment to put the pressure on Foster. Oh, it's into the wall. Schultz gets very high there, just trying to avoid, I think it was Jamie Nankervis, uh, who was moving out of the way, but he's got very high up there and clipped the wall. And that has meant that uh, Riley Curtis has been able to move up into third position. Yeah, that is a pivotal moment there. And that nice, clean activity of Bali uh, race car there, Ruben Phelps, uh, getting at that damage on the front. That's not going to help him, but that has helped Riley Curtis. That has allowed him to get past... Um, he did lose a little bit of time from that, but he has now got some clean air between himself, Skurlock and Foster, and he's going to try and close that gap on those two drivers as we've got 15 laps to go. Lap 85 at the moment will be lap 86 as they cross the line. Uh, this race is coming towards the end of it now, but Foster is still in the lead with a hard-pressing Skurlock behind him, and what a drive from Skurlock, starting from pit lane, getting back up to P2. Absolutely brilliant drive there. Yeah, and if you're going to... Oh, he's hit the wall very hard there. Skurlock just coming out of... I think it was turn two. And uh, there's some significant damage down the right-hand side of the Crank Esports entry of Michael Skurlock. So that has or will impact on uh, his ability to chase down Edward Foster at the front. Yeah, it looked almost like there was a little bit of crabbing going into the corner there. Uh, just maybe some suspension damage. We'll see how quickly Riley Curtis starts catching up to Skurlock. Just how much damage that did 
caused to the car. Um, definitely not looking as easy to drive as it was before as he is starting to hemorrhage time here now to Riley Curtis. You can see it visually, but Curtis is just absolutely gobbling up that gap and will soon be right on the tail of the 350 of Michael Scurlock. Just in the background there, Norm Clark getting really high up in the line into the wall, and he's now jumped down into pit lane to get some repairs done uh, to the 09 entry. Yeah, real shame there. We saw Norman Clark running up in a good position. Uh, unfortunate to get caught up in the wall, but it is perilous out there tonight, as Ryan Jones was saying as well. Uh, very easy to lose the car here. And as that little rise comes, there are some nasty bumps on this track that catch you out at Darlington. Uh, meanwhile, at the front, third, second and third place, you've got Riley Curtis really putting the screws on that crank eSport car. They're side by side as they come into turn one. Riley Curtis goes down the inside, makes that look easy gets ahead of Skurlock, he's going to start running away, and now he's got to try and catch Foster if he can. Only 11 laps remaining of this race. Can he do it? I don't think so. I think he might be just a little bit too far away with 12 laps to go to make the impact here, but Riley Curtis, what a drive. 19 positions up from his qualifying spot of 21st into 2nd, and uh, he has done a fantastic job here tonight for Mark 1 Esports. Yeah, really good job tonight. Very strong drive from Riley Curtis. Um, again, former teammate of Edward Foster, actually. So those guys do know each other quite well. So if, if, they, if we do get a late caution or something like that, we're going to get some real dicey action at the front there. Foster is still just cruising around. He's just putting that car in the right spots, right, right places at the right time. Really, really good positioning for him. Uh, nice, clean car as well. Uh, no damage that I can see on that car. So really good drive from Foster keeping it up there. But Riley Curtis is now trying to put the pressure on, trying to get that speed up. Will he be able to make it? Um, at the moment, it doesn't look like it. Foster is setting slightly faster laps. We've just jumped on the front of the nose of Steve Williams, who was harassing. Oh, and he's hit the wall there very, very hard indeed. He was just harassing Joshua Carroll Walden, and uh, he's now lost a ton of time. In fact, I think he might even... Uh, no, he's just got... It was Matty Raymond down on the inside of him there as well. So just uh, that's going to cost him a couple of places. I'm just going to focus on the fact that Luke Traher, it was only two spots in front of him. And as I speak, Luke Traher has got past uh, oh, Ruben Phelps. goes into Stephen Williams there. Sorry, jump over your shirt. No, no problems. Uh, Matty Raymond just gets a little bit loose underneath Stephen Williams there. Um, very tricky, though. So it looks like uh, Raymond just went on the apron a little bit. Caught Stephen Williams there. Apologies over the radio, but no major harm done. They've managed to keep it going. Um, but yeah, Luke Traher just keeping the car up there at the moment. He's just managed to get past Ruben Phelps as well. So Luke Traher doing a good job getting that car up into fourth position. His title rival is down there in eighth at the moment. Uh, meanwhile, Kurt Donnelly is trying to catch up to him, uh, but the laps are closing quite quickly. So we're just trying to show a replay here of the incident with Steve Williams. There, you can just see him just getting up into the wall. And uh, Matty Raymond there just straight on the radio, as you said, with the apologies. So that was the incident there that you were referring to. Yeah, unfortunate between both of them. Um, Stephen Williams really does look to be struggling out there after those early impacts. Uh, now, the big thing for Stephen Williams is can he keep... Oh, oh Matty Raymond up into the wall as well. Uh, Matty Raymond just catching a big bit of the wall there as he tries to chase down Joshua Carroll Walden. Uh, but what I was going to say is can Stephen Williams keep uh, Kate Donnelly away from him. Kate Donnelly making 10 positions so far this race, having a good one himself. Uh, Stephen Williams does look to be struggling out there. Kate Donnelly is setting faster times at the moment. He's about two to three tenths of a lap faster than Stephen Williams. Uh, this could be a very close one at the end as we've got uh, one after six laps to go. So lap 95, so five laps to go, sorry. A very, very coming towards the end here. Uh, Foster out in front, Riley Kerr second, Michael Scullock third, Luke Traher fourth, Ruben Phelps fifth, Joshua Carroll Walden in sixth, seventh for Manny Raymond, Stephen Williams there in eighth, Kay Donnelly in ninth, and Paul Jackson doing a great job in tenth at the moment. So this gap here between Matty Raymond and Luke Traher is, uh, sorry, between Stephen Williams and Luke Traher is uh, out to uh, five places now, so... And uh, with the amount of damage on Skurlock's car, you wonder if Luke Traher will catch him and move up into third position. And uh, will Steve Williams be able to hang on with the uh, the damage to the 98 entry? So 
uh, as uh, we just see there Paul Jackson get up into the wall late in the race as well so could be uh, not too bad a night for um, Luke Traher here in terms of uh, his championship hopes but uh, equally with that gap to Steve Williams uh, he should retain the uh, number one position you think at the end of the night yeah, it's not a disaster for Stephen Williams. He's doing exactly what he needs to keep that championship uh, in his grasp at the moment. Uh, Luke Traher just really needs Stephen Williams to have some terrible nights and finish right at the bottom of the order. Uh, that that's his. Uh, that's pretty much the only way we're going to see Traher climbing up the ranks at the moment. Unfortunately, Traher didn't a wasn't able to make it to every race this season, and that's why there's such a difference between the points at the front at the moment. But Traher is doing everything right. He is doing a fantastic job still. Uh, up in the top five still in this race, Ruben Phelps in fifth at the moment. Um, great job from those guys. But you've got to say at the moment, Edwin Foster out front, uh, two and a half second lead, just really pacing along. Uh, we haven't seen Foster in trucks for a long time, but he is uh, showing that he is definitely one of those, uh, one of the class of the field. Yes, and I think his run tonight's probably been able by the fact that the uh, Cup Series isn't on this Thursday evening, meaning that uh, no practice required. And oh, wow, <laughs> it would not have been a pretty outcome there if uh, that uh, had have resulted in. Uh, an incident, but uh, fortunately enough, uh, <laughs> able to get away with it there. I thought I may have put the curse of the commentator on Foster there. I was about bracing myself for a very swift punch to the face. Um, a white flag is out. Last lap of this race. Just four corners that stand between Foster and the first win in the trucks for him of the 2021 season. Riley Curtis just sitting there in second place. Good position for him at the moment. Plenty of time between himself and and Michael Skerlock. Michael Skerlock has Luke Traher just behind him. Uh, you've got to wonder if Traher might try it, but Foster comes across, takes the win. Brilliant job from Foster. Uh, Riley Curtis finishes second. Michael Skerlock in third. Luke Traher fourth. Ruben Phelps fifth. Joshua Carabon sixth. Maddie Raymond seventh. Stephen Williams, great job of keeping that car uh, alive in eighth place. Kay Donnelly finishes in ninth. Paul Jackson tenth. And what a run. A uh, probably uh, less eventful race than we were expecting, I think. And uh, we did mention quality driving throughout the Ants Car Series continues to be reflected here tonight. But a uh, grace, great race win and yet another race winner for the Truck Series. As uh, Head gets right into the uh, flick spin there in the uh, FGM Ecast sponsored truck. And uh, a good result for him to take out the win tonight. Yeah, and that's uh, Foster's first win for the Atari Autosport team as well. The uh, His new team with teammates uh, Joshua Carroll and uh, Norman Clark and uh, Jason Hartigan. Um, so first win for that team, and he does it first time out in the trucks. He's going to be pretty happy, I'm sure, about that. But what a great run from Riley Curtis there. 19 positions up, getting second place. Michael Skirlock, of course, starting from pit lane. Uh, all the way from the back up into third position. Great recovery for him. Luke Traher did a good job of keeping that car going after a couple of big impacts. Ruben Phelps, another solid night there. Another top five finish. Uh, we've just dragged the race winner and second place getter, Ed Foster and Riley Curtis, into the box. Uh, congratulations, guys, uh, on a race well run. Thanks very much. Thanks. So, Ed, obviously start with you. First run back in the Utes uh, for oh, the – how dare I? A uh, <laughs> first run back in the trucks for quite some time and uh, uh, refreshing to uh, get a good run for you there. Yeah, it was good. Um, I don't normally run the trucks, as you know, because I, I tend to focus on the cup stuff. But, um, yeah, they, uh, we have got an off week for the um, cup this week, so I thought, oh, well, you know, I've probably got time to jump into one. Plus the fact that it was Darlington uh, really helped because I love Darlington. So, um, yeah, it was really cool to be able to come in and, uh, come in and get a good result. I, I really genuinely was not expecting much. Um, and then when I saw Stevie Dub on pole, he's been so good um, in this series so far, and Traher there as well. I'm like, oh, well, you know, those two are probably going to fight it out between themselves. But, uh, yeah, it didn't happen. I'm, I'm happy. There's a fair bit of uh, tyre fall away for them for that long period there, so maybe pushing a little bit too hard. But uh, the uh, the grip level's tonight pretty low from what we understand from the, the drivers we grabbed from uh, the care centre. 
Um, look, it didn't really seem that bad. I think um, if you if you overdrove it, then yeah, definitely the um, the tyres suffered. But um, I was just really just doing my best to try and look after it. Um, especially being up front, you've got that kind of luxury of the fact that Darlington's actually quite hard to pass on as well. So um, I was quite happy to let guys draw up to me, fight as much as I could, um, and just try to outlast them tyre wise, which uh, seems to be. Well, I guess you'll have to ask them, but that seems to be what happened. Um, so as far as, as far as the tyres, they, they weren't too disastrous, I don't think. Well, a, uh, a race will run for you. And um, just uh, we've been asked to change the order of things a little bit here tonight. So just a, a quick run through your sponsors before we jump on to uh, Riley, Riley Curtis in second. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's really cool to uh, get, the, get the first win for Natari under the belt. Um, it's only a truck win, but I'll, I'll take it nonetheless. And, of course, we want to thank uh, Ferguson Group Media, Bridgestone Select, Race Magazine, and also Two Fat Blokes for their support. Fantastic there and a good run. And, uh, yeah, great uh, to get the win for Natari there um, in just the second outing for the team um, with the revised uh, lineup there. So congratulations. Thanks very much. Riley, jumping over to you, mate. A uh, massive drive for you tonight, up a whopping 19 places into the second position uh, for Mark 1. Uh, a really, really strong drive and performance and uh, probably the one we've been waiting for uh, for the team. So congratulations on your second place. Yeah, thanks. It was it was a pretty pretty good drive through the field. I didn't obviously find a lot of the troubles the other boys seemed to with, with running out of grip, so I thought it was quite good out there. We did notice through the session that a couple of guys had uh, issues with some of the transition in the track as well and um, a, a little bit of lap traffic, but uh, you managed to drive through that without too many dramas? Yeah, I just looked after my tyres early in the run, made sure that they were right as the green runs went on. Um, everyone was quite courteous, which uh, makes it a lot easier when everyone's good to race against, so no dramas. Yeah, absolutely there. And um, 20, 21st in qualifying, just not quite able to get it down on, on the cold track? Uh, I don't actually like Darlington, so I intentionally ran really slow in qualifying. Um, and then just the race, it somehow hooked up. So, well, That's good to see. And as I said, um, a, a, a good run there. Unfortunately, um, not able to get the uh, the team across the line with the... Uh, the Black Cat Syndrome still uh, impacting Aiden, but it was uh, good to see one of the Mark 1 boys get up the front. So um, a, uh, a quick drop for your sponsors? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, Vertex, Acuta, uh, Nichi Forklifts, Mitsubishi Forklifts, major sponsors MLA, plus uh, just the whole Mark 1 team for you know, merging with A1 and giving us a chance to run with the bigger team. So good to get them on the podium finally after a few unlucky weeks. Yeah, absolutely, and excited to see what comes uh, with that whole setup as well. Um, and uh, hopefully you can uh, get uh, Aiden up there as well at some stage in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, here's, here's hoping that all of our luck turns a bit better soon. We've got one over Black Cats, but thanks again to you boys for putting on a good show. Uh, no dramas at all. It's our pleasure. And uh, jumping over now to uh, Mr. Skurlock. Uh, the Pit Lane Crusader, who's managed to make a run mm. from Pit Lane up into third place tonight. It wasn't intentional, mate. <laughs> I was a bit too relaxed there on the start and just forgot, mate. Forgot to come in. But uh, uh, luckily, like, it started me off real quick. Eh? Like, it only gave me a three-second hold, and then it let me off, and I came out. It wasn't even at the back, which is pretty weird. Yeah, we sort of you snuck up on a little bit there. We um we were watching along and looking, and then all of a sudden you're in thirteenth position. So uh, we uh, you, you could have got away with it there. We thought you just had a ripper run straight out of pit lane and managed to move yourself up into thirteenth. But obviously a, a good drive there. Um, a little bit late on, just uh, copying a bit of damage that slowed you down in the chase for Foster. Yeah, I mean early on you can't really try hard here. You can't try and pass people because. It's too hard. Like, you wear your shit out real quick. Sorry for the language. <laughs> Australian, <laughs> mate. Can't help it. Um, it's not a PJ show. You'll be right. Yeah. Now, what happens is you go underneath people and they got the outside and you just can't get it done and it just wears them out. So I just took my time and, like, luckily just moved up really without passing many people, to be honest. People sort of messed up and hit the wall and blah, blah, blah. But then, yeah, I got behind Ed. I know that he was just sort of taking his time 
So I was like, I was happy to just sit there behind him for a while and just keep, you know, wait for him hopefully to make some sort of mistake because the only way else to do it is to slide jobs people into the wall, you know. Um, and then I had a big old hit, mate, into that wall down the back straight and the car just went nowhere after that. And then Lukey was coming. He was about to pass me. If we had one more lap, he was going to get me for third there. Yeah, well, everyone obviously struggling a little bit there as well. We saw um, Luke get up into the wall. In fact, we saw a number of the guys that usually run up the front, Steve Williams, copying, uh, copying a little bit too. So a, a difficult track, clearly not one favoured by all of the drivers, but um, a little bit of a difficult night for everyone. But congratulations on your drive from uh, the rear of the field. Yeah, and no, I appreciate it, man. Just good to get a result, a decent one for once. It's been a bit bad lately. Yeah, of course, last week, uh, completely running out of luck there as well. So just your uh, sponsor rundown as well, uh, quickly there, Mick. Yeah, uh, Virtual Motorsport Mentor uh, and iRace Designs. And you guys for putting it on, boys. Thank you. Always welcome there, running in the Crank Esports team too. So uh, that is our grid. Uh, grid, I keep saying that. That is our podium even for tonight. Not our grid, a part of the grid, but that is our podium for tonight. We had Edward Foster taking out the win, followed by Riley Curtis and Michael Skurlock as our top three. Uh, Luke Traher in fourth, Ruben Phelps in fifth, uh, Carol Walden sixth. We had Matty Raymond seventh, Steve William eighth, Kate Donnelly ninth. Good drive from Kate again tonight. And uh, Paul Jackson rounding out the top 10 for tonight at Darlington. And uh, that, uh, Carl, uh, was uh, quite a clean run. It was. It was a really fun race to actually watch there. Of course, next time out, we are heading to the Circuit of the Americas. And while we've got some of you up here in the booth, of course, uh, what are you expecting running at the uh, Cota in the trucks? Oh, I won't be there. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll see the other two. We'll, we'll see you at Sonoma Red. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know about this. Yeah, so so, America's, what are we doing there? Yeah, a bit of a strange one to head to. Um, obviously, you got some experience on the road races, Scurley. Uh, you must be pretty happy to see a track on the uh, on the old schedule. <laughs> I don't know about that one, though. Have you, have you been there? The <laughs> chicanes at the start are going to be a nightmare. <laughs> I can't Absolute imagine nightmare. Driving a truck around there, I must say, uh, going to be an interesting one for sure. But uh, that that's going to be something very different for the truck series, a very different challenge as well, something very different from what we've seen tonight. Yeah, it's a very long circuit too. It'd be, yeah, I'll be really interested to see how they handle, to be honest. If it's really ploughy, it could be a very long night. <laughs> I'll get the sleep, sleeping bag set up in preparation for that one just in case we end up spending <laughs> most of the night on the broadcast. But I must admit, when I saw it, I thought, oh, my goodness, what are we doing going there? But that's all right. It's interesting to watch. Yeah, so Circuit of the Americas next week, 5th of uh, April. And then, of course, we're heading off to Martinsville for the Cup, the 8th of April. Uh, so the uh, Cup action will be back next week. Of course, we've got a week off this week. Um, and I'll jump over to you, Stuart, for what's coming up on FGM Ecast. Yeah, absolutely. So tomorrow night, 7.45, we head back to the circuit for Oz Pro am from Mount Panorama tomorrow night for a, uh, a split sprint race there. And uh, with the whopping grids we've been having at that series, not too dissimilar to uh, Anne's car, it's going to be interesting with the GT3s running there. So um, very good parity across that class and uh, looking forward to getting that one on the air tomorrow night from 745 here on FGM Ecast, and uh, there may be a special guest in the booth for tomorrow night. So just uh, make sure you tune in and uh, jump on the stream for that one and uh, join us then. Other than that, Carl, again, as always, thank you tonight for your education. I had to download Darlington this evening before we broadcast. It's so certainly a track I've never been at before, um, but appreciate you joining me here on FGM Ecast as always. So you're always, always, you're always welcome, Stuart, and... Uh... I will see you next time out for the trucks and, of course, the cup. Absolutely, and we look forward to getting back into that. So tomorrow night for us, actually the last stream for the week for us as we head into the Easter break. Um, so if you're not coming back until our next ANCAR, 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 ANCAR broadcast, it will be next Monday uh, evening uh, here on FGME Car. So we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, and that is about it for us for the evening. So we will catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in to FGME Car, your e-place for pace.